Hello guys, I'm back and guess where I am now? I'm in a six month old beauty, a 737-800 and today I'm going to try to demonstrate to you the cockpit of a 737-NG and how does it differ and the similarities with the Boeing 737 Classic. So if you want, you can follow me and see you in the cockpit. So welcome to the cockpit. Uh, I will show you around in a bit, but first of all I would like to do the IRS alignment so I can show you all the displays and modes because it will take us at least 10 minutes. So first of all, we select both IRS selectors to nav, one by one. We wait for the on-DC light to extinguish. And we have a line. Then the next one, on-DC. And we have a line. Now I will go to the flight management computer and it's now asking me for the positions at IRS position. Our current position will be approximately as the same as the last position so I insert it here. And now we can also check the status how long will the alignment take. This is showing as nine minutes for the left system, nine minutes for the right system. So now as the IRS system is aligning itself, I would like to show you the general differences from the 737 Classic cockpit. And there are not so many. So let's start from the overhead, for example. This upper part is basically absolutely the same with an addition of maybe a few lights. For example, a GPS light or ILS light and the GLS light. Then when we're going lower, the flight controls are, again, almost the same. Very, very small differences. Navigation instrument transfer switches are almost the same, but we have the displays control panel as well. Fuel, no difference at all. For the electrics, the only big difference is that we have a digital readout of all the uh, electrical indications instead of round dials like on the 737 Classic. Then all the electric panel up to here is the same. Then we have the APU EGT indication. The lights <laughs> again the same. Uh, if we go to the middle, the cockpit lighting displays are the same. Equipment cooling, emergency exit lights, Fasten seat belts, no smoking, right up to here. Everything looks, again, the same. Same for the heaters, window heat, probe heat, anti-ice, hydraulics, uh, maybe a, a little bit more lights for the doors, then cockpit voice recorder, pressurization. If we go here, we have the air conditioning, which is almost the same again. Same here, bleeds. And the only difference on the overhead left is the pressurization. As you can see, it is much more simple and you have digital readouts for the flight altitude, for the land altitude, though the valve position is indicated by a round dial, just like in the classic. If we go here on the mode control panel, the only difference is the design but there is basically the same number of switches and they do the same things except here we have two panels on both sides which control the displays okay now again we'll talk about the center panel a little bit later when we have the rs alignment complete so let us go a little bit down the main pedestal the thrust levers speed brakes flaps parking brake, fuel cutoff levers, uh, stabilizer trims, everything is absolutely the same, form, except maybe small design differences. Then we have the fire panel, which is also, again, the same. We have the same tests we can perform, the fault or inoperative test, and of course the fire test. Then if we go for the radio panel, there indeed are some differences. 
but again these are mostly design differences for example that we have I don't know more digital displays for all for all the radio settings but the main thing is the same except that maybe on our classic simulator you didn't see this panel this is the cargo fire panel because well let's say our simulator is not equipped with a cargo extinguishing system so this is basically it for now let us wait for the RS alignment so the RS alignment is complete now I can show you around the display units as you can see we have six of them two of them have the role of the primary flight display same as in the Boeing 737 classic or the Airbus A320 and two of them this one and this one are the navigation displays and the two displays in the middle uh, this is the ICAS engine indication and crew alerting system first display and the second display on these you can see all all the information about the engines which you could see on the round dials and analog instruments on the 737 classic for example you have the N1 the low pressure turbine uh, rotating speed in percentage then you have the exhaust gas temperature you have fuel flow you have the fuel on board indications you can see that the second tank is showing low and then on the lower multifunction display you can select either engines then you have a readout of the N2 the high pressure turbine rotation speed again the fuel flow you have all pressure all temperature all quantity and vibration or you can select the systems where you currently have the hydraulics uh, A and B quantity and percentage and the pressure you would also have the flight control indications here but they are not present at this moment because the system is not pressurized on this multifunction display you can also see the view through a camera in the cabin which is located at the cockpit door we can operate this via this switch we select the displays and you can change the view from here if you want you can see it here this is the left camera you can see somebody walking there this is the center camera and this is the right camera we will shut it down for now then continuing on you can see the primary flight display it is a little bit similar to the Airbus and a little bit less similar to the 737 classic in the middle of course st as per standards it has an attitude ind indicator where you could also have the fly directors you should probably know about these and on the left you have the speed tape showing the speed from 45 knots and above you have the ground speed you have a compass here which shows the heading which is set on the mode control panel it's indicating that it's currently magnetic you can also choose to true on the right similar to the Airbus and contrary to the 737 classic you have the altitude indication uh, which can be seen here showing approximately 625 feet above the mean sea level as the QNH is currently set not really correctly to 1013 hectopascals here you can see the command from the MCP for altitude as well as speed here and you can see the vertical speed here and these are flight mode annunciators currently you cannot see anything here I could try to switch the fly director on and you have an indication here and here you would have for example for commands of altitude or heading or VNAV or LNAV or anything like that and on the left of course either speed or N1 for the thrust levers now let's move on to the navigation display currently we are in the map mode as you can see here we could also choose a 
center map mode if we want to. This would give us a 360 degree view of the uh, environment around us and the routes if we, if we have any selected. Let's switch to the full for now. And here you can also have a very nice vertical profile information. So because we are standing now with uh, no vertical speed at all, we're not climbing nor descending, it's showing that it's showing a straight white line. Should we climb or descend, that would of course change at, and it would show us when we will reach uh, some level we require. And of course, these green indications are the terrain. So for example, if we would maintain altitude for, I don't know how, uh, going straight ahead from now, we would probably bump into some mountains, some small hills. Okay, continuing on, you have the usual VOR indication. We can also select the centralized. You have the approach where you would do where you would put in an ILS frequency and it would guide you towards the runway. Well currently some disagreeing but there's no problem. And you can also see plan. Should we have any route selected into the flight management system we would of course get an indication here. And of course you can select different ranges. But for now, since there, are, there is no route, we are displaying no information, you cannot see <laughs> really anything. If we go back to map, we can select different uh, information, we, different random information we want to see on the navigation display. For example, if we want to see waypoints around us, we select waypoints and you can see all kinds of waypoints around like Romeo from Mike Uniform Bravo or Ducat or Victor India 102 and so on. You could also select uh, airports. Around us there really aren't any but we if we increase the range we might see something here like Minsk. We could also select stations. These are NDBs or VORs, for example, like Minsk VOR, Mike November Sierra. So, of course, there are more functions, but I cannot show you everything in one go, so this is probably about it. And uh, what's a cool function of the 737NG, which you don't have in the Classic, is that you can switch between displays. For example, if it's more comfortable, you can switch one display to some other place. Like, let's say, on the lower display unit, we select the navigation display like that. Or, in here, we could get an engine primary indication. And, of course, we can do this, this the same for the navigation display on the captain side. We can have primary engine instruments, we can switch the primary flight display, or we can switch the multifunction display, for example, to see, to see things like engine or system information. Okay, we can switch back to normal. Of course, the same could be done on the right side, but there's no need to show that. Okay, what I also want to, to show you is a GPWS system test because this system is a little bit different from the Classic and from the Airbus you might want to see it operate. It will give us some sound alerts and some alerts on the primary flight display and navigation display concerning terrain or unusual attitudes or things like that. So I'll press the test and enjoy! Flight slow. Pull up. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Terrain. Terrain. Pull up. Obstacle. Obstacle. Pull up. Airspeed. Low. So, I hope you enjoyed our short presentation. And see you next time.